The amount of air that can enter the lungs is governed by the compliance of the lungs. This is a measure of how much the volume of the lung can change for each unit change in pressure and is a gauge of the elastic properties of the lungs and the chest wall. The graph we've just seen of pressure against volume demonstrates this in part, showing that energy in the form of pressure change is needed to inflate the lungs. You can think of alveoli as being a bit like balloons. When they are deflated and have a small volume, a large amount of energy and a big pressure change is needed to inflate each alveolus, so there is a relatively small change in overall lung volume for a big change in pressure. As the alveoli inflate and become more uniform in size, less energy is needed and you see a much bigger change in volume for the same change in pressure. Likewise, when the alveoli are nearly at their maximum volume and their walls are tense and distended, even adding a lot of extra pressure will not increase the volume much. In fact, it might just cause damage to the alveolus in the form of volume trauma, damage caused by excessive volume, or barrow trauma, too much pressure. Damage to the alveoli like this can even lead to pneumothorax, where air leaks out of the lung and into the thorax, causing the lung to collapse. Important things that affect compliance are position. Compliance is lower when lying flat, as the diaphragm shifts up and is pushed into the chest by the abdominal organs. Age, the lungs get stiffer as we get older. Obesity, a heavier, thicker chest wall makes it stiffer and more difficult to expand. And lung diseases can also affect compliance. Atelectasis, where the small airways and bronchioles get blocked and patches of the lungs can collapse, decreases lung compliance because it's harder for air to get in. Whereas in diseases such as emphysema, where the alveoli are dilated and baggy, compliance is increased. However, this is at the expense of elasticity because the alveoli become floppy and lose their elastic recoil.